All right, hello 14ers, welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is August 21st, 2019, and guys, we are going to have some fun going in and digging today. Uh, for some of the people, I had posted a comment within the comments uh, about the next video that would come. Uh, it, th for those of you who understand, this isn't that video. This is something else I was working on. And uh, a little bit more came in last night. And so I thought this would be a great time to really go into it. Um, but the, the one that some of you had heard that I was going to do next, it is very, very detailed. I've got, uh, uh, there's a dozen, you can see them all up here. I've got a dozen uh, uh, plus of windows open just for that um, and that is just a piece of it I've got to go even deeper and uh, it relates to the churches it relates to who is who the division of the Gentiles you know why chapter 1 of Genesis it has male and female and who all the male and females are getting into the ark and how it relates to the Lord and the Lord God and, and how it relates into uh, Smyrna and Philadelphia. And man, <laughs> it's an awesome, awesome, extremely in-depth video that will be maybe put on a couple Berean caps and uh, <laughs> get ready to, to pause and seek and confirm in prayer and all these things for yourself. It's an awesome one. Today's video is a good one too. We know that we're watching for this potential. You know, if this uh, if this uh, creation calendar is correct, you know, we're looking at this time frame of starting tomorrow, where our fifth month, 2019, the 22nd day is the seventh day of the fifth month, which would be the attack day. So if the creation calendar is correct, we can see what comes from it. But today, this is something we're, we're watching, guys. We're watching for. But one thing we've said here many times, this first attack that's coming on Israel. You see, everything in the scriptures is also types and shadows. It will replay. I was just listening to Prophet Sidhu on a conference here in, in August 2019, and he was talking about that. You know, we've been saying it for a long time. Everything in the scripture, just about everything, is a type and shadow of events to come. And are they going to be exactly the same? No, they're not going to be exactly the same, but we're trying to understand them as close as we can. And so this first attack that's coming on Israel is not, quote unquote, the, the one that shakes and catches the whole world off guard. This is the one that comes against Israel first, Israel's first attack before the second attack comes within several weeks. And then that's it. That That is the beginning of the tribulation from that time forward the bride will have been taken out and so on and so forth we move on from there all right the tribulation has begun so we're trying to understand and, and find these times and try to understand them as best as we can from scripture and there's a lot of people out there apparently i haven't looked at it i have no idea but so i'm told that there's a lot of people out there talking about um uh the eighth day all right, which would be this year, I think it's uh, in it's October, let's see, it's October, whoops, it's October 21st, all right, the 20th into the 21st, but it's the 22nd day of the first month, all right, but according to scripture, it would be the 22nd day of the seventh month. Now, there's people talking about this. And we've touched on this type of thing. We looked at it a year ago, two years ago. But in particular, like when it was getting started, we have a lot more, guys, way more understanding than we've had before. And I guess um, Pearl Corelli had this, this link that she was talking about, and uh, our sister Tabitha shared it with me. And we're going to break it down in a way that none of these others have broken it down before because they don't understand who the Gospels are speaking to. If you can't understand who the Gospels are speaking to, you can't understand this time of the 14 years, it's very, very difficult to be able to figure it out. All right, so we're going to get into that today, and we're going to show how it ties into the bride and, and who's talking to the bride and which portions are to the bride, because a lot of what we talk from, now if you've been watching this ministry for any amount of time, 
you know we go from Genesis to Revelation. But we do focus, excuse me, mainly on, uh, it, there's a lot in Genesis that we focus on. We focus in all of the prophets. Uh, we have some focus in the Psalms and then in the Gospels and then a little bit uh, uh, in other of the chapters of the New Testament. And of course, all tying into Revelation. So of course, we go from start to finish, but there's areas where we focus more on. And one of them is generally Zechariah. Right, we're trying to understand this time frame of beginning based on Zechariah. However, you know we've shown this. How many times have we shown this, guys? The book of Zechariah, when this was first revealed to us here, uh, oh, almost a year and a half ago, Zechariah with his fourteen chapters, and if we look at Hosea, fourteen chapters. Is this is these are two of the of the minor prophets now all of these minor prophets have opened up in a whole bunch of understanding and in particular Hosea and Zechariah from start to finish and we've done it with Daniel with some in Ezekiel some in uh, Jeremiah some in Isaiah but a lot of what we we focused on a lot of what I spent time focusing on within this seven years is chapter one of Zechariah which is the year 2019 where we're at and the things that it says about it. And then, of course, when you go to the year 2025, all right, this would be the rest of 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, the seventh year of rest, all right? And we see that, you know, when you fasted, when you, when you mourned in the fifth and seventh month, all right? We see these things. We get it. We're trying to figure it out. But here's the thing. We're, we're figuring it out on Zach, in Zechariah. Because Zechariah has so much timing in, in the revelation of the truth of the 14 years, which, by the way, I'm going to touch on. I'm going to go into something to just give you guys more confidence in the 14 years and to wake, help you use and give more information to show others, to show your pastors, to show family and friends that look yet again. When you see how we're going to break down this 14 years again, you guys are just going to be floored. You're going to see how perfectly it ties into the 13th year and to the 14th. I mean, it, it's so awesome. It is so unbelievable. All right. So, but, and we're going to do that in a minute. But, you know, all of these 14 years, everything is related. Like we see the Lord here on Zion, right? This is, it would be the year 2026. Here's the Lord on Zion, right? He's coming to dwell on, on Zion. He's returned. Over here, he was jealous for Zion, you know, with great jealousy, and he was angry. Over here, he's no longer jealous. See, I was, I was. He's no longer jealous because he's returned. Okay, this is the Lord returning on Zion. And this is the beginning of trumpets, the first year of trumpets in the year 2026. You have 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. At the end of 13, going into 14, we have, this would be like the end time frame of trumpets, right? Between here and here. And what do we have at the beginning of chapter 14? We now have the Lord returning feet down on the Mount of Olives. We've shown this many times. So I use Zechariah to break things down and to show these understandings all throughout the scriptures. That there's a reason the, the seals are six seals and the seventh is rest. Trumpets, seven trump, uh, six trumpets, the seventh is rest. All right? It's over and over and over again. But... We don't spend too much time in Hosea. We recently spent a little bit of time. We touch on it here and there, and I, I make the points within it. But Hosea isn't speaking to Judah. Hosea is speaking to the church. All right? Is speaking to the lost tribes, to the church. Judah is Zechariah. All right? The church is Hosea. And so if we're to understand a little bit more that if Zechariah is giving us the timeline, these, these timing of events within it, we know that Hosea is as well. We've shown John, the book of John. John has 21 chapters. And the reason for 21 chapters is the story of Jacob and his two wives. The first seven years were easy. So there's, there's not much. It's been good seven years. Nothing really crazy in the world. It seems everything has been usual. But the Spirit of God has been work, working and waking up the bride. 
And that's what so many have woken up in these past, you know, six, seven years to wake up. They, we've been really waking up. So many, especially in and around 2017 here in this ministry, that have, that have told me it, including myself, including our brother Jimmy out in uh, Montreal. Many, many, many of you, it's been in around 2017. I remember Adam at Parable of the Vineyard told me the same thing. It was in 2017 as well, around this same time. So, you know, this is the time. It was the seven easy years. That's what John, the seven easy years. And then what? Chapter eight in the book of John. So if you take away the seven easy years, we're going to go into this, guys. You're going to love it. You take away the seven easy years, and here you have what? You have seven years and seven years. We've shown you before what should happen in the rapture year, in the year 2025. Well, you should see when the Lord has gone to prepare a place for them and so on and so forth. Well, that's what we see. We know the Lord returns after the end of the sixth trumpet, which is, means seven years of seals total, six years of trumpets to the seventh one is rest. When you read the seventh trumpet, it's everything is now the Lord. It's been given to him, right? So it's after the sixth trumpet, he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives and it's over. And what do we find in John chapter 20? We now find the Lord in, in the whole story of the crucifixion in chapter 20 in his resurrection and so forth in chapter 20. Not in 21, whereas Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it's in the last chapter of their books. The reason is because it's 20 years. Jacob worked seven years and seven years, and the final six years, right, he makes a covenant in that 20th year with his father-in-law. You see, and we've shown that over and over and over again. Well, Hosea is going to be a little bit of our focus today. So is Luke. So is John with a little bit of Ruth, because even though we've been trying to understand through Zechariah with the timing, we can see these events. We are, it's 2019. You know, we've said it, we've got video on it after video, but we've got a specific one that says there is no other year. Everything points to this time frame of 2019. So we're going to go into that. And, but before we go down all that, and reveal a lot of this understanding, you're going to see how it connects, guys. It's so incredible. There's not a single thing out of place. You're going to see it, it perfectly, perfectly lines up to something I've always known, well, for many, 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 many months, because we know who the Gospels are speaking to. Uh, in fact, if you went back to see videos at around this time last year, or even a little bit later uh, this time last year, in like uh, maybe in into September of 2018, you would see we were talking about this day because this day that we were talking about relates to Luke and the about an eighth day. Okay, so we're going to go into all of that. But first, I want to share with you guys what uh, our brother Lynn, so I was up pretty late last night. I was up till about 2.30 in the morning and uh, so is our brother Lynn. All right, you guys see him in the comments. He was our brother, you know, that was, that was always in our prayers. Um, he had the, uh, 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 um, I think he had a, a mild heart attack, but it was another heart attack that he had had, and he's feeling better. He's at home now. He has been for a little bit now. Uh, we put that prayer out for him. Well, he was up late last night, and he sent me something along the lines of what he had realized was, well, wait a second. If we look at creation, creation was seven years, right? Seven or seven days. But what are we told? A day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. What do most Christians, how are uh, most Christians believe that the earth is what? It's about 6,000 years old, right? They tend to all believe that it's about 6,000 years old. Well, that's not true. If we, how long was creation? All right? Creation was six days and the seventh was rest. But, right, this is just a little piece I wanted, to, I wanted to show you guys to give you guys more ammunition to be able to share with people that the truth is 14 years. And here's the thing. When, when you say to people 14 years, we don't open with it's 14 years. They'll just they'll call you back crazy. But what we do is we'll talk about things like the robes. You know, how do you explain that the robes are different colors in each gospel? Um, how is it the 21 years of Jacob? What if I can explain that to you? What about Ishmael called affliction 
and it's 13 years later they make a covenant when Abraham is 99 and then the promise is at the 14th year. All right? How is it with all these things over and over and over again we see that it's 14 years? And this, you know, the, the, the whole time frame of the 14 years, it's not all the Gentiles. So the, the people that are teaching seven years, which is just about everybody, <laughs> of course, uh, but all the pastors and everybody that's talking of, of those that are even talking about end times that are sharing the seven years, in a way they're right because all the ones talking about it are who? They're the Gentiles. It's the Gentiles, you see? And when you when you understand the seven years of seals and the seven years of trumpets, you start to, you're able to see these things and piece them together all throughout scripture. And with what uh, Lynn had shared with me, I thought, you know what? I've known about it, but I haven't put a lot of focus in these things. But I haven't put a lot of focus. And I thought, you know what? This would be a, a great one to just add in here today before we get going into the rest of it. So what do we get here in 2 Peter 3, verse 8? We've talked about this many, many times. I believe there's a greater mystery hidden in this understanding that relates to the millennial reign, that relates potentially from the, the 20th year to the end of the 21st year. And you notice how it's one year, right? Well, a year or, you know, a day is as a thousand years, like it says here, saying, beloved, be not ignorant. Whoa, that's pretty harsh. Be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. Well, what does this tell us right off the bat? Well, first of all, I think there's a mystery in the very end for it. But what else do we know that this is telling us? It's telling us that if we were if we were the people we are now and we were on the earth as the Lord was creating everything and we were there in, in the sense of time, we would see creation as what? 6,000 years. Right? And then the seventh is rest. It would be 7,000 years. So let's let's look at this. Let's let this uh, finish loading. Come on. All right, so we, we've shown you guys this before. Man, it's going really slow. It's like saying seven years have passed. Boom. The, it's sometime here late in 2019, the seals will begin. It'll be the seven years of seals. We've, we've covered this before. I just added this to the end now. Okay, so here we were in 2 Peter 3, verse 8. All right, be not ignorant of, of this one thing, that a thousand years is with the Lord, or sorry, one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. So from man's perspective, it's it would be like a thousand years. But in God's perspective, it's like saying it's a day. All right, because it doesn't operate in time. It, there's no That dimension doesn't have time. So he's giving us the understanding of how long it would have taken if we were getting fit from our perspective. So what this is saying, like I said, meaning the seven days to of creation for us would really be like 7,000 total years. So then we have man's time of 7,000 years. Okay, so there's the creation of 7,000 years and then the time of man because after creation, then God created Adam, right? And there's, that's, that's all part of this other video that's going into much more detail. Okay, but we've got the time of man now. We've got this portion of 7,000 years that we know about, okay? Of which we're getting close to the 6,000th year as we've broken down here many times, revealing that the count wasn't from Jesus' birth. Um, in fact, our brother Keith, and I might have shown it a, uh, several months ago, but our brother Keith had shared me that video, and the, and the guy, when he did the video, he used the, that sketch program, you know, like the hand drawing it all out really quick, um, that when Adam was born, uh, or not born, when Adam was created, God didn't just, boom, instantly create Eve for him, right? Didn't create woman for him. He was, he was around for a while. 
we don't have a, an exact amount of time, but many people believe through research that he was actually 33 years old by that time. So these kind of things make sense, right? So from that time, we have 6,000 years to complete, and then we have what? The 7,000th year of rest. Now, if we look at it even in the individual years, you know, because we're showing, we're talking about seven years of seals, seven years of trumpets. When does the Lord return? At the start of the 6,000th year, right? At the start of that year, and he completes it, and then it's what? The millennial reign. You see? So when is he returning? After 13 years. He's here to, to clean things up, get things back together in that final year which is like doing the covenant in that 20th year, which is the same as saying the 13th year, which is just like Zechariah when we see the Lord coming now down at the feet down on the Mount of Olives at the start of the 14th year, which is like the affliction of who is Ishmael for 13 years. And then there's an agreement and a covenant. And then what do we see? The beginning of the 14th year, boom. Now they have Isaac, the promise. All right, it's at the end of the 13th, which is the same as saying 20th, the end of the 20th. Well, guess what? Look at the millennials. Creation was seven, it was 6,000 years, and the 7,000th year was rest. Then we have the time of man. The time of man from his creation, we have 7,000 years. But guess what? When does the Lord return? Right? When does the Lord return? The Lord's going to return at the end of 13,000 years, which is going to be what? The end of 13 years from the seals and the trumpets. He's going to fulfill that year of the 6,000th, which is like the 13,000th. You see? And then what's going to happen? It will be the millennial reign for the final second seven, which is what? 14,000 years. Now check this out. Let's just go through it real quick. Revealing that the count wasn't from his birth, but from his death and resurrection. All right? Salvation didn't come from Jesus' birth. All right? It came from his death and resurrection. That's where it came from. So putting man's time right now would be to about what? We're at about 5986 years. Isn't that interesting? 86 years, and there would be, that would mean what? Oh, there's 14 years to go. Well, can, doesn't that sound familiar to you guys? Doesn't that sound familiar? Genesis 16, when Abraham has his first son, Ishmael, with Hagar. All right? Ishmael, in the, of who's the affliction, right? He's always... He's a wild man, and his hand will be against everybody and everybody against him. I mean, that's, that's the Arabs, right? That's the Muslims. So how old was Abraham? Abraham was 86 years old when he had Ishmael. How old was he? 86 years old with how many years to go? 14 years to go to complete the 6,000 years, right? So 86 of course, also being very significant to Abraham when he had Ishmael. And in the 13th year, right before the promise, a covenant is made in all of his house. And at the 14th year, the promise comes. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So what do we get? We follow the story. And we see if we go to cha Genesis chapter 17, we see Abraham is 99 years old. And the Almighty God came to him, and what does he do? He makes a covenant between himself, uh, him and Abraham, and Abraham, right, makes it in all of his house. All right, all of his house. They all have to. Uh, um, uh, they all agree to the covenant. The covenant is established with them. All right, and when you read this, you're going to see that Ishmael. See, you have Abraham, who's 99 years old, and you have Ishmael, who's 13 years old when he was circumcised. You see, the promise, and it was the cutting of the flesh, right? The circumcision. So what do you have after 13 years? And then what do you get when Abraham then turns 100? 
He turns 100 and the promise comes. Isaac is born. Do you follow this? 7,000 of creation, 14 years to go from approximately where we are now. 13 years later, there's the circumcision when the Lord will return feet down on the Mount of Olives, which is also like saying the 13, not only the 13th year, but it's after 13,000 years that the Lord will return after the covenant has been made. And what does he do? He cleans everything up and he completes the 14th year, which is also what? The promise comes in the 14th year. And then what does he do? We can go check this out, right? Remember we said we teach from Genesis to Revelation? Well, here's a clear one for you from Genesis to Revelation. At the si See the sixth trumpet in that same hour when the two witnesses stood up and then went up to heaven. God called them up. What do we see? There's a great earthquake. It's specific when it has a great earthquake, guys. There are only so many great earthquakes in the end times. There are many, many earthquakes and big violent ones, but there is only a few great earthquakes. I believe there's four. And what do we see? Everybody, they were frightened. The remnant were frightened and they gave glory to God. Why? Because they saw what came down. All right, the Lord returned feet down on the Mount of Olives. How do we know? Because look at what happens at the seventh trumpet. Saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever. All right, and then you can go read it. Keep reading. Okay, this is after 13 years. This is the 14th year. Now he's going to reign. He's going to make it established. They're going to set things up and do all that stuff. And then the 15th year, that, that millennial time that's going to take place, that 15th year, each tribe receives their land back. And that ties into the, the other video that I'm working on in relation to Dan and Ephraim and when they all get their lands and who they are and where they, what time frame they were working in. All right. So there it is, guys. So let me show you. Let's see if this can make it nice and straightforward for you. So from creation, we have 6,000 years of creation, six days, which to us would be a day for a thousand, a thousand for a day, right? Plus the thousand of rest. So seven days, 7,000 years. Plus, we had 4,000 years to Christ's death and resurrection from the from uh, Adam. And what do we have? 2,000 years. Just like we're told, the Lord will return after two days, right? We see that where? In Hosea. All right? We see it in Hosea chapter 6. Why do we see it in Hosea chapter 6? Because that's the time of the sixth seal time frame. They're talking about having been beaten and stripped down and, and oh, all of these things. So let us now return to the Lord and see that after two days and in the in a, and then after three, if we will be his. Why? Because not everybody is resurrected after two days, right? Not everybody is resurrected at his return. You see, the millennial reign isn't for the Gentiles. It's for the Jews, right? It's for the Israelites. And so for the Hebrews. So there are those who then will be resurrected at the end of the 7,000 years. And that's why you read that in Hosea. Sorry, give me a second here. Here, I'll pause it for a second. Text from one of the kids. All right. So now you see, you can see, and that's what, these are the things that, um, that Hosea talks about and is confirming for us. Why you see after two days and then after three. That's talking about after the 2,000 years and after the 3,000 years, which is after 6,000, it's the same as 6,000, and after the millennial reign of 1,000. So we have the 7,000 from creation, 4,000 to Christ's uh, death and resurrection, 2,000 years for his return, and then we have his 1,000-year reign. So we have a total of 7,000 years plus 7,000 years is 14,000 years or seven days and seven days in God's eyes. What is it? Seven and seven. Here we are again. We're now showing this based on creation and the times given to us in scriptures from start to finish. And what have we been showing here in this ministry over and over again? The truth of the uh, the truth of seven years and seven years for a total of 14. Seven years of seals, seven years of trumpets. 
Seven years of seals for Jesus' lost sheep. Seven years of trumpets for Father God's people. Now use this to explain to people that still don't want to believe the 14 years. It is true that the pastors are teaching us seven, but that's only half true. They're teaching us seven years being three and a half years of seals and three and a half years of trumpets. It's seven years of seals for the Gentiles and the time of the church to be over. And then it goes to the time of Jacob. It goes to the time of Judah. When time with all that devastation that will happen at the end of the, at the sixth seal, at the end of the sixth seal, the time, the counts of the years, it will become 360 day years again. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. And the Gentiles that are remaining, that are still out and about throughout the earth, they're going to, when they come to the Lord, those that do, those stragglers that come in over time, they will have to not just believe in the Lord, they will have other things that they will have to commit to as well. All right? Guys, it is 14 years. And we've got people like what, uh, I don't know if Pearl still watches and, and Colleen and a number of other people. Uh, Pastor Sandy, I don't know if he watches. He, I think he just refuses it all. Um, uh, we've got Nick Vanderland, a number of people that are watching, but none of them want to talk about 14 years. They've, they've all generally got more subscribers than we do, and none of them, having watched 14 years a number of times and seeing all the explanations, still won't go to, their, go to the people and show, hey, look, guys, I want to show you something. Even show it in a way that, hey, look at what the scriptures are showing it and check out this channel. And if they don't want to say this channel, that's fine. I don't want the credit. I just want the word out. We want to get the understanding out there, guys. And so here we are with that little comment from Lynn, you know, a little piece that we can use to show greater and greater understanding. It's the exact same thing as seals to trumpets, creation, to the Lord's return. Every single piece and part ties in exactly to the 14 years. The grand scheme and the little portion. From the thousand years to the 14 days, right? The, the 14,000 to the 14 days to the 14 years. Everything ties into this same amount. It's so amazing. I just... I love it. I, how many more times can we show it, right? How many more places can we show it over and over and over and over again? We've done it from creation to the end. And all throughout and between. So awesome. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> all right, a little sip of coffee. Okay. Now watch this. Okay, now this day that we're talking about is, is a particular day that is very, very significant. All right? Apparently, there's a number of people out there talking about it now. This is a day that, like I said, I've spoken about for probably in its season about two years because this started for us in around September of 2017. So I might have even talked a little bit about it back then, but certainly last year we were also teaching on it. And there's a reason we were teaching on it. All right? And the reason is because of Luke. We know Luke speaks to the bride. We know that Mark speaks to the sleeping portion of the church. And we know that Matthew speaks to Judah. Now, was it ever a mystery? No, for many, 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 many decades probably, maybe even longer, everybody has known that Matthew is speaking to Judah. That wasn't the mystery. The problem was everybody kept teaching from Matthew. Go listen to all of your pastors that teach you. Every single one of them. Not 99.9. .9, every single one of them spend 90 plus percent of their time in the book of Matthew. Knowing that the book of Matthew is written to Judah, to the Jews. Isn't that interesting? But they can't fully determine who Mark was written to, even though they would think it's to the Gentiles. All right? But Luke, they've never understood it. And so Mark, they would teach a little bit from and from Luke, even less. Right? Maybe a percent or two from Luke. Not even. When really it should have been in reverse. 
All right? Why? Because obviously this is all, it was all part of God's plan. Because the bride isn't going to be a lot. The bride is for those that are seeking, searching, watching, and waiting for him. And I'm not saying those pastors aren't, all right? I'm certainly not saying that. But it's hard to get them to, to change their ways of understanding when they think it's always been correct and there's no other way, all right? But the importance of this day has to do with the Gospel of Luke, okay? So we're going to go into this Luke and into Ruth and into Hosea and, and Revelation. We're going to show these understandings why this is so significant, okay? And don't forget, guys, we have a website too, right? Ministryrevealed.com. So you want to see the 14 years? There you go. We are the ministry of the understanding of 14 years and the opening of the books. All right? Of that, there is no denying. All right? We got our verse of the day. This is all put together by our brother Jimmy. All right? And if you want to go to other pages, you can just click over here. All right? You click here. I don't know how slow it's going to be. Oh, it's not bad. Okay, and you can come over here and you can choose what you want to see. You can come over here and all the videos that we've done, you can go there and you can click on them and download them. No charge. Everything's free. That You saw there's two books, color or black and white on the homepage. You can download those for free. Okay, so we spoke about this here with Second Peter and Genesis. So now what we want to do, I want to show you something. I'm not going to show you uh, this this link yet. But we're going to build up as we surround things with it in the understanding. Remember, like I said, we've, we've continuously gone to the book of Zechariah because Zechariah gives us such clear detail as to events relating into the book of Revelation and in Daniel right in these timings. And the reason why even Hosea does, but in a different sense, like when you see in chapter 6 and it talks about, you know, after 2 and all these other things, is because the detail is different because it's speaking to the church. All right? That church that's sleeping. But it doesn't start with the church that's sleeping. All right? So let's look at some of these things here in Luke. What do we know in Luke? We've covered this. We've covered some of these things before, but we're going to put this all together in its relation to where we are now, and this time, this day that we're looking for, all right, this escape of the bride or this potential escape of the bride time frame. Now, does this clear up for us the 40 days? Nope. It still doesn't clear up. Guys, there is always going, there, there's a 40 days. Is it about to begin? Yeah, I absolutely believe it's coming very, 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 very soon. All right, I believe there's still potentially something coming this week, which would be tomorrow into Friday. So, or even tonight into tomorrow, maybe into Friday, you know, we'll see how these things play out. But August, we, I've said it so many times, we've shown it so many times. There's so many prophets and seers and, and things. It, it's, guys, there's no other year. All right. We haven't figured out the 40 days, but we will be aware when it happens. I've shown you many times that I believe, and I'll touch on this just real quick before we get going in that. I believe that just as Daniel says in Daniel 9, that Israel will be attacked first, then it looks like the covenant will come. All right? Know you therefore, Daniel 9, 25, know you therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment, all right, this an agreement, a decree that they're going to do to the to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince, okay? So there's going to be a declaration, a, a decree sent out to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem. It looks like Netanyahu may not want to do this peace deal after all. Okay? But what this says is that Israel, Jerusalem, will be attacked first because then a decree comes out to restore and to build. Does Israel need to be restored and built right now? No. So that's why this we're looking at this history repeating, which is why we're looking at this, you know, this time frame over the next day or so to Israel first get attacked. If it's not this day, well, we got to remember it's types and shadows. We are close. But this first attack 
Isn't the whole world being attacked? All right. Isn't this shaking of the whole earth yet? When we go into Luke and into Mark and into Matthew and we read on, in the discourses, what do the discourses start with? Nation shall rise against nation, people against people. That's the red horse rider. That's not the white horse rider time. I believe that white horse rider being the duel, it's the time when the Antichrist comes and it's also the time when the Holy Spirit comes. All right. We know that the Holy Spirit is going to work during this time, maybe through the Lord, work during this time of 40 days. So there'll be destruction coming in Israel. That could be the 40-day warning, the sign for us that are watching. We understand that Israel has to be attacked first. There'll be a decree that comes out that they can stay to rebuild. Some of them will be left to stay and rebuild. And then, of course, Ishmael will then come from the north, the Lion of the North, will then come and attack, and that will be the beginning time frame of the tribulation. Okay, And what do we see when we go to the ark? We see the raven goes out first, and then very shortly after, we see the, the, um, the dove go out. Okay, So Israel has to be destroyed before there can be a decree to get rebuilt. So if Netanyahu is not playing ball, maybe there's going to be an attack come, and then they'll be allowed to settle it. It'll be settled quickly within two days. And they're like almost like a, having forced them to come to this peace deal to get it done with. All right, let's get this thing done. And that will be the beginning. Everything keeps showing us, guys, 14 years. And everything keeps saying it's 2019. It's about to begin. Okay? So when we go now here into Luke, what do we see? Where are we? In Luke 21, like I've said, we've covered a lot of these things in, in pieces here and there. But when we go into Luke 21, you see uh, commotions and be not terrified, wars, all that stuff. But they all say this, right? Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. When the tribulation really gets going, it will be at this point here when all nations start rising up against each other. Okay? But when we... Read down here at the end, all right, some of our favorites. We all love this. Uh, Luke 21, 30. Let's go to Luke 21, 36, okay? Not being caught unawares, right? Don't want to be caught unawares in the cares of this world so that it comes upon a snare upon you like it will the whole earth, okay? Upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. What? It will come as a surprise and as a snare on everybody that dwells on the face of the earth. It's being very descriptive. This first attack on Israel isn't that necessary, necessarily that point. It's the second one. All right? It's the second one. So watch you therefore and pray always that you may be found accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. <clears throat> and only in Luke's discourse does it end with these black letter words with uh, Luke Luke interjecting with this at the end. And in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple. And at night, he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple for to hear him. That is how Luke's discourse ends. I'll just show you in Mark real quick, Mark 13. It is all red letter words. There is nothing of that, see? So watch and pray always. Or sorry, so always watch, you see? There's nothing of it, neither in Matthew, okay? It's only found in Luke. Well, we did a video not too long ago that also showed us in John something, okay? There's seven years of John have passed. Now here are the next seven years of John and then the last seven years, okay? So after the seven years, here's eight, so this would be like saying about an eighth day. We've spoken about this. About an eighth day. And I'll show you where we get that. But let's follow this along from what Luke said. What did Luke's discourse end with? It ends with how John 8 starts. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives 
And early in the morning he came again unto the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. You see? Why would Luke's discourse end with what John 8 introduces it all in as? We've shown many times these books are opening here in this ministry. We are understanding these things coming to life. We're seeing the scriptures are truly alive and being revealed more and more and more. This is how it ends in the discourse that those who will escape all these things, this is where they're going to meet them. All right, they're going to go be with the Lord. Well, who are these people? Look at verse 3. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery and set her in the midst. Well, isn't that interesting? The woman caught in adultery is brought to Jesus who is in the Mount of Olives, teaching at the temple, and they all came to see him. Well, who are the Gentiles? The Gentiles are the adulterers. They were the, the ones in adultery. All right? That's what the scriptures have been telling us over and over and over again. So here we are. Seven years are complete. About an eighth day, right near the start of that eighth day. So about an eighth day, boom, the woman in adultery is brought to him. Well, you say, well, wait a second. That just talks about this at the beginning of 14 years. Well, what about in the year of rest? So the seven years is over right at about the beginning of eight days. All right. Or the eighth, the eighth year, the beginning of trumpet. Uh, the, sorry, the beginning of the tribulation of the 14 years. There she is. Well, how about if we go to chapter 14, which would be the seventh year of seals, which we know is what? Six seals. It's all of these things going on. The seventh one is rest. All right. Between chapter uh, between or chapter seven of Revelation, which is between the seventh seal and the end of the sixth seal, we see the hundred forty four thousand are sealed, and we see a great multitude brought before them. And chapter seven is about half an hour, which would be about six months of peace and quiet. Okay, that would be chapter fourteen. Seven years were easy. Here's the next seven. So this would be the rest of the seventh year of seals. When what? When the Lord would come down, right, to gather his people. Well, chapter 14 of John, what do we have? We have the story that in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. Do you think that just happens to be in chapter 14, which equals the seventh year uh, the seventh year of seals, right? That, that final year? No, because you know what? In Luke, when they, when they had to go prepare that place, remember they go and prepare a place... Um, where is it? If we read it, <clears throat> I'm trying to see where it was here. Okay, when we read it in Luke, for example, what does it say? Okay, they go to they go to find that upper room. Tell the guy, you know, to have that place that my master needs the place. All right, it's the guest room. It's the Passover of the disciples, and he sets up in a large room. And look, that upper room is what furnished. There, make ready. Okay? Nothing about being prepared. When we go into the book of, of uh, Mark, look what we find in Mark. I might be one chapter away yet. Chapter 14. What do we see when they're to go prepare the upper room? When they go to prepare the upper room, well, first of all, look at that. Mark chapter 14, verse 14. Wasn't that interesting? That's precisely what we were just showing in John. It's chapter 14. And if you go to the book of Revelation, what chapter is it? When the Lord's on Zion, it's chapter 14, right? With the 144,000. Because it's perfect. <coughs> and look at this place. They go to that place and look what it says in Mark. And he will show you a large upper room furnished, like Luke said. Look at how it's italicized. 
and prepared. Why on earth does Mark have the addition of and prepared? The answer is, oops, the answer is the place prepared where the Lord went to prepare a place for them in paradise that he is returning down upon with Zion. That is why. So what are we seeing? <clears throat> seven years, boom, at about the eighth. There's the seventh year of seals, the easy one. There's where your rapture comes. There's the place prepared that Matthew was talking about, who's the rapture group that was the sleeping church. And then, of course, we can come down here, and we talked about it in the last video or second last video. There it is, chapter 20, when the Lord will return, feet down about on the Mount of Olives. Now, that doesn't say that. It's talking about his, his resurrection. <coughs> And about it being raised again from the dead, right? That's pretty wild. That's a whole story on its own. Okay? It's the same story, guys. These books are opening and revealing themselves. So if that's the case, and we see this from the end of Luke's story in the discourse for the bride, and then we see this woman who is taken in adultery brought to him, all right? Well, when we go to Hosea... <clears throat> who has the 14 chapters, just like John chapter 8 is the beginning of 14 chapters that are left in the book. When we come to Hosea chapter 1, we've covered this before. Look at right near the beginning again of Hosea chapter 1. The beginning of the word of the Lord to Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, who is like a Jesus, right? The deliverer. Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms. You see, there it is again. And we go to chapter six, which is the time of the sixth seal. And what does it say? Let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has smitten us, but he will bind us up. You see, why are they returning to the Lord? Because after the sixth seal, we see... Hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb for his, for his wrath has come. You see, they're going to see him coming. What was the time of the sixth seal? That was the time of the example of Lot, the hailstones and everything coming down. You see, and then they say, after two days, he will revive us. You see, somebody's going to revive. And in the third day, he will raise us up. So this is after 2,000 years in that 2031 to 2032, right? Which is after two days, you see that? So at the end of that 6,000 years, he will revive us. He's not gonna revive us when he returns at the end of the 13th to start the 14th. He's gonna revive us after the 6,000 years, after the two days, all right? Or that 2,000 years from his death and resurrection. And on the third day, we have you know, then they'll find out if they get to dwell with him forever in eternity. All right, to be raised up again. You see, guys, over and over and over. And then we showed you how it connects directly into uh, the 14th. You see, and then here we are. <laughs> here we are. Chapter 14, verse 7. 14 years have passed. Now the end of the 7th. And what do we have? They that dwell under his shadow... They uh, uh, shall return. They shall revive. All right, what's this talking about? After that 2,000-year time frame, they're going to be revived, you see? Because Hosea is giving us that time frame, that perspective of understanding, hidden within all of these scriptures, all of these revelations of the end times, which is why Jesus said that until the things be fulfilled in him, in the law of Moses, in the Psalms, and in the prophets. All right? These are the mysteries of end times revealed in them. And here we have those who got to go right at the start. Who? The adulterers, the, the whores. All right? Who were the first ones that came to Jesus? Who did Jesus say? The tax collectors, the whores, the, you know, all of those people. The prostitutes, all that. You see? That's us. All right? We get to go first. 
You want to prove it a little bit more? People have a tough time saying, well, we're not adulterers. We're... Yes, we are. Let's go to Ruth. Everybody loves sweet old Ruth, don't we? Ruth is lovely, right? It's the whole story of our kinsman redeemer with the Lord. We all know it so well. And what does she say? Oh, she's in the field. And then Boaz takes notice of her and finds out about her. And, and she's gleaning and doing all these things. And Boaz takes notice of her and, and says these things. And she's being instructed by her mother-in-law as to how to act and to do these things. Why? Because she's a Gentile, right? We all know that story. Well, this is why a program like eSword is so important so that we can understand these things with much more depth and clarity. But this is an easy one. What does she call herself? Let's read Ruth 2 verse 10. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground. Well, wouldn't that be what we do with the Lord too, right? And said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me seeing I am a stranger, okay? See, adultery from, from uh, John, all right? In the Greek words, then we find adultery in Hosea chapter one with 14 years as we did with John with 14 years. Both of them, adultery. And then here we are with Ruth, our Gentile, this sweet old Ruth, bowing before Boaz, the kinsman redeemer, and what does she call herself? A stranger, which means what? Adulteress. Huh. Huh. You following? See, it even tells you foreign, non-relative, adulteress, different. You guys getting it? Over and over and over again, we're being revealed the 14 years and the bride going at the beginning. So when we read this, it doesn't look. Now, I this is why I'm still not committed on where these 40 days are. Because in many things when we read, it would appear the bride goes at the beginning of the 40 days. And in many other things, it appears the bride goes at the end. But let me show you something. If the scriptures that are speaking directly to the bride in, its, in their timing, like we see, Ruth is the Gentile bride. She's the adulteress in the understanding, all right, as a Gentile. And we know that Hosea is speaking to the Gentiles and that there's the adulterous bride there. And we know Luke, uh, uh, John, in the timing of chapter 8, is also speaking to the adulterers brought to him in relation to the end of Luke's discourse. These are all things speaking to the Gentile portion, not to the Zechariah portion. You follow me? And when we do this, when we look at this focus from the Gentile scripture perspectives, the ones that are speaking to her or to them, and this portion of the bride going, they're showing that it's at the start of the 14 years. Which is what? Right before that time frame, right in, in the round before that time frame of when the, the, the Ishmael, the, the Lion of the North, the, the beginning of the 14, that, that raven goes out and attacks. You see, over and over and over again. So when we're seeing this here in John 8, check this out. We're going to now go deeper into this. When we see this in John 8, we did this video not too long ago when we showed how John 8 being at the beginning of the eighth year, right? Like an eighth day. Okay, so it's like about an eighth day. It's right near the start of it. Okay, for it to be the whole eighth day, it would have to fulfill the whole thing. You see, so that's why the scriptures would say about an eighth day. Okay, well, let's watch this. When we go into Luke, where, whoops, Luke 9, where do we get this understanding about Luke and about an eighth day? There might be many people talking about this if they've even been able to connect any of this to this point. But 
this might be where they get it from. We can give you the understanding of this. We taught on it just a few months ago, maybe two, three months ago. In Luke uh, 9, verse 28, okay? All three of them, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, have this conversation. But, of course, all of them are differently because they're speaking to different people. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is in heaven, the third heaven. So it'll be boom. Those that haven't died up to that point, it'll just be boom. There you are. Your next breath will be in heaven. And what does it say? Well, I say next breath. You'll be in heaven, right? That'll be the next thing you see is the kingdom of God, which is the third heaven. And it says, and it came to pass about an eighth days. After these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up a mountain to pray. And he prayed. And as he prayed, his raiment changed and everything. All right. We've seen this. You guys can go read this. Read this. Read the Mount Transfiguration story in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But read it from Luke first. Read Luke first, then read Mark, and then read Matthew. You'll see the story play out from the bride being taken out at the beginning after the seven easy years, which is why we read about an eighth days. Okay, approximately right in that early time of the eighth day. Otherwise, you know what this would have said? It would have said, after seven days. You following? You see, after seven days. It would have said, after seven days, and then that would have been, boom, right at the, that time at the beginning of the 14 years. But it doesn't say that. It says about an eighth day. And then we have Hosea chapter 1 and John chapter 8, the beginning of 14 years remaining, not right at the beginning, but a couple, three verses in. Because it's about an eighth day. It's very close. Well, how can we know this? We've broken this down many times. Go to Mark chapter 9 and look at his transfiguration. We can start at 9-1 and we'll read 2. Verily I say unto you that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen, past tense, the kingdom of God come with power. See? They're not suddenly, boom, they're going to see it because they're in it. They will have seen it coming in past tense. Why? The end of the sixth seal. At the end of the sixth seal, everybody's looking up and saying, oh, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. You see? It's the kingdom of God coming. But they didn't get to go right away. That's for the rapture we're talking about. It didn't happen right away. It's a little bit later. How do we know? Well, look at what Mark says. And after... Six days. Well, isn't that interesting? After six days. Well, what's after six days? <laughs> the end of the sixth seal, right? What do we see after the sixth seal? Go to chapter 7 of Revelation. You see the 144,000 sealed, and you see the great multitude, which is the rapture going before the Lord. Where? <laughs> To the kingdom that they saw coming, that with everybody went, oh, at the end of six, right? You see, after six days, which is after the six seals, before the seventh, all right? The six years of seals of the tribulation portion must, must be completed before what? The rapture of the sleeping church now awake for those that survived, all right? Well, isn't that interesting? Because what did Hosea say? Chapter 6? He is, you know, he's done this, he's beaten, all these things have come against him. Why? Because they were there during the seals. All right, the bride was taken out at the beginning, the rest of the sleeping church had to endure. You see? That's why we see after six days. Now, what about when we go to Matthew? Matthew, it's in, well, we can go to the end of 16, Matthew 16, 28, to get that first portion. Verily I say unto you that there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Well, that's very different now too, isn't it? <laughs> Darn right it is. Now they're seeing the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Why? It's the end of the sixth trumpet. He's coming down, feet down on the Mount of Olives. Follow? Well, let's see when is that. After six days. 
But Mark also said after six days. <laughs> exactly. Because this is the six years of trumpets. When does the Lord return? You see, 6,000 years of creation, six days of creation, and the seventh was rest. That is like the seventh year of seals. It is the rest. It is the 144,000 getting sealed. It's the rapture of the church. And then there's about six, month, about six months of rest, of peace in heaven and on earth. And then what? You've got six years of trumpets. And at the end of the six years of trumpets, this portion for Judah, at the end of those six years of trumpets, the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. And it's the great earthquake. And everybody looks up and gives praises to the Lord. And... Now those kingdoms of the heaven and those of the earth are, my, are his and so on and so forth. You see? So what is this key that we're looking at? Luke 9.28. About an eight days. This had been a mystery for me for about a year when, when the 14, almost a year, not quite, maybe about a year. Um, from when the understanding of all the 14 and these books opening and all this stuff started happening here, this had been a mystery to me for a while because I understood this after six and the after six, which after the sixth seal, after the sixth trumpet, I understood those things. But why was it about an eighth day? Actually, it was probably a year and a half this troubled me, actually. And it wasn't until recently, and we showed you in that video like we were just talking about earlier, that it's the reason why John, it's at the beginning of chapter 8. The six years are over, but the escape doesn't happen till about an eighth day. The beginning of the eighth day. Now, why is this significant? How are we looking at this to relate it to this year? To, to events that are going on, knowing that there is no other year that it's going to begin. Okay? Now remember, we're not looking at this now as we are with Zechariah and trying to understand the 40 days and their attack. We're looking at this in the perspective of when we could see the bride being taken out. Okay? Watch this. You ready? Zechariah, or uh, sorry, John <laughs> Zechariah, because it was chapter 7. I remember I go to that so often, right? So, John chapter 7 is all about what? The Feast of Tabernacles, which is also called the Feast of Booths, and it's called a couple other things as well. Okay? So, Feast of Booths, here it is, Feast of Tabernacles. So, now the Jews' Feast of the Tabernacles was at hand. Okay? It was at hand. You guys can go read the story for yourself. Uh, verse 8, Go ye up into the feast... Uh, unto the feast, I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. Okay? He's talking to the Jews. And then what happens? He goes up, but he goes not up openly, but as it were, in secret. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> He's going in secret. Why? Because the whole world's not going to know what's about to happen, guys. He's coming in secret. It is true, it's in secret. All right? And so now what do we read? Now we go to verse 14. <laughs> Funny again, eh? 7, 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. Okay, now there he is, middle of the feast. We can keep going. Let's go to verse down here into the 30s. And we find out Jesus is there teaching. And he says, uh, let's read from 33 through 35. Then said Jesus unto them, yet a little while I am with you. See, yet a little while I am with you. Think of like that 40 day time frame, right? Yet a little while I'm with you. And then I go unto him that sent me. You shall seek me and you shall not find me. And excuse me, and where I am, there you cannot come. Why not? <laughs> the answer is the beginning. Where I go, you cannot come. Why? Who's he talking to? The Jews. They cannot go where he's going. All right? 
Whither I go, you cannot come. So let's see if we can get a clearer answer. We know he's talking to the Jews, and they can't go to the kingdom of God. They can't go into the third heaven, right? Because their promise is what? The millennial reign. All right, so let's see what he says. Verse 35. Then said the Jews among themselves. See, then said the Jews among themselves. And people were asking, you know, how to change colors and stuff. Let me just show you. See, I'll highlight it first. And then you come up here to the color scheme. You can choose one of these colors. Or you can come here and choose one of these. Or you can come over here and just click what you want. And then press OK and then see the color changes. All right, you want to get rid of the color. You can come over here and it's clear. This is for underlining. All right. So now he's talking to the Jews. Uh, uh, then said, sorry, then said the Jews among themselves, whither will he go that we should not find him? And listen to what they say amongst themselves. Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and to teach the Gentiles? Why do you think when it's over and they're done at this feast, what is it, guys? It's the tribulation portion of the seals. When he will go and it will be the time of the Gentiles. It will be the final time of the Gentiles before the rapture. And then it will become Jacob's time of trouble. You follow? Well, let's keep going. Remember, I said this whole chapter is just simply about the seven days, right? And it says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, <laughs> Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believes on me, as the scriptures has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Holy Spirit who hadn't come yet. Of course the Holy Spirit didn't come yet. Not for ten more days, right? So what is he doing? He's giving a shout out. A final shout out on the last day. Which is called the what? The last day. That great day of the feast. And then they're saying, they're speaking amongst themselves, you know, and what are some of them saying? Of a truth, this is the prophet. Well, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, as Jonah was unto the Ninevites, so shall the Son of Man be to this generation, being the final generation. So we're looking for the Lord somehow, or, or maybe to those that won't fully understand Okay, there's this warning of 40 days that we're not fully clear up, but this looks like it's the end of it. Okay, he, it's at the end. He, the warning is over, and now he's given a shout out to anyone that will come to believe on him. And they say, whoa, of a truth, this is the prophet. And others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Right, so then they're all being snarky. And then he's like, all right, all right, whatever. Nicodemus says his thing. Remember, there that's part of the the churches as well, right? Nicodemus, who he hated. And then what do we see? It ends with, and everyone, every man went to his own house, went unto his own house. Okay? So what do we have going on here? This whole thing is taking place. All of these conversations here in chapter 7 of John are all taking place during the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths. When it's all over at that great day, we come to chapter 8, which is about the 8th chapter, about the 8th day, about the 8th year. Remember we were just looking at in Luke? And what do we see? Not only do we see the understanding that was in Luke's Mount Transfiguration of about an 8th day, we also see the end of Luke's discourse when all those being accounted worthy having gone to him and here's that woman brought an adultery unto him. But, did you catch that? What feast came first before this about an eighth day? That's right. That's right. Which feast came first at about the eighth day? 
you had, see, here it is, the Feast of Tabernacles. See, Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Tabernacles. Chapter 7 of John is all about the Feast of Tabernacles. All right, it's all about the Feast of Tabernacles. And what is it? Well, if this is the beginning of the new year, we're just basing this again. We're basing this off of the, uh, the, the, the Hebrew calendar. If it's the creation calendar and you see Israel attack tomorrow, then push everything back two weeks. All right? So what do we see? There's the beginning of the year. Here's a few weeks in. Well, guess what? It's the 22nd day. It's the seventh month. And the 22nd day of the seventh month. Now you're following? It's the seventh month in, in God's count. All right? Just like the month of Av is the fifth month, the seventh month is the month of Tishri. But for the Jews, they, they have Tishri. They count it as uh, the beginning of the year. All right? Because there's a spiritual calendar and there's a civil calendar. This, for, the first, uh, for Tishri, is the civil calendar. But when we're reading in the scriptures of the, the fifth and the seventh month and so forth, the seventh month is Tishri. And so what are we on? What day is this? The seventh month, the 22nd day. What is it like saying almost, guys? The seven years are over, all right? And it's on the 22nd day. Well, guess what? What do we understand in all of this? It just so happens this year... It lands on the 21st day on our Gregorian calendar. And what, what were we just talking about with John with the 21 years? That it had to do with Jacob. It had to do with the, the seven easy and then seven more and then the, to the 20th and then the final year when the Lord's return and it's all that cleanup tiding time. It's 21 years. And when it's all over, that final Jubilee year is on the 22nd year. So I've been looking at 22. We've been talking about this for a long, 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 long time which is another reason why we're looking at tomorrow as a very important one as well. If this truly is that time on the creation calendar of the 7th of Av. Okay? So that's why we're looking at that as well. And our eyes are peeling. I mean, we're, we're, our eyes are peeled watching this stuff all the time now, all right? We're aware of this time frame that we're in. And so what do we have here? We have, if this is the beginning, like I said, so the beginning of the year starts in here. Well, what do you have? You have, by this point, about an eighth day. All right? The time has already started of what? The 14 years. You see? It's at the early part of the 14 years. When we go to Hosea, go to chapter 1. Here it is, verse 2. It's at the start of the 14 years. And here we are. After seven years, of which John, seven easy years, and then it's about to start. It's at the beginning of eight, like of the eighth, like we said. What was the seventh? And see if we can find a clue. It's after the Feast of Tabernacles. After the Feast of Tabernacles is called what? Just like you read there the last, the the great day, the last day, the great day. And that day is seventh month, 22nd day. And do you want to know what it's called? See it right here? Shmini uh, Atzeret, watch this. Here it is. It's called the eighth day of assembly, and it's celebrated on the 22nd day of the Hebrew calendar in the month of Tishri. They call it the first month, but in the Lord's, when he's talking about it, He's talking about it on the 7th. All right? It's the 7th month, the 22nd day. Well, this is what our sister, uh, I believe Pearl, was talking about. And Tabitha shared this link with me. In the U.S. Bankruptcy Code, they have a code called 722. All right? 722. And in U.S. code, it's called the Redemption Code. All right? Guys, go read this for yourselves. You can look it up in Wikipedia. Just type in 722 Redemption. It's the bankruptcy code. 
And this code 722 is what allows a debtor to redeem collateral based on the market value of that collateral. The bankruptcy code allows a debtor to pay the retail value to what? This means to pay in full <laughs> the value of the collateral in a lump sum payment to the creditor in exchange for the lien on the collateral being released. In order for 722 redemption to apply, to, uh, to apply, the item in question must be personal property intended primarily for personal, oh, check this out, must be personal property intended primarily for personal family or household use now do you see why this could be a very 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 important day the most important day outside of Christ's death and resurrection in all of creation that we've been watching for are things coming before it absolutely what are those exact times I I'm not sure we've been trying to figure those 40 days out for a while but they're coming. They're coming. Do you see how it says that this it's based on personal property intended primarily for personal, right? For the individual. For the family, meaning say my wife and my children. So if it was me personal, for my wife and my children being my family or household. Do you know why it's household? What if... My, I came across this today speaking with our brother Keith about the other video that we're really getting in depth on is what if uh, I think of my neighbors, one of my neighbors, you know, his, his daughter lives there, one or two of them, and, and the son-in-law is there with the grandkids. That would call, that would be considered household. All right. So all those that are in the person's household. So myself, my family, and, you know, Maybe uh, one of my kids is married and they have a couple children, for example. That is personal, family, and household. Now, why, why does this seem important? Why would that, why, how does this extend into what we're looking at here in redemption? <laughs> which is the seventh month, 22nd day for redemption, which is the about eighth day, which is called the, 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 the eighth day of assembly. You guys are following all this, right? <laughs> just want to be sure okay but let me show you something do you remember how we spoke about in um oh it was a while ago about paul and a lot of people it was a, it was a breath of fresh air when we say well you know if somebody is married to somebody um like i'll, I'll say my sister and my brother uh, my brother-in-law my sister is a believer she's a watching praying ready sister in christ but her husband still hums and haws about all this of course, her as the believer prays and is praying for him. I pray for him. Our family prays for him. You know, we pray for him. But they're in the same household. Now, my, my sister doesn't have any children, but let's say she had children. And as long as they were in her household, well, guess what? Paul tells us about that, doesn't he? I can't remember where that one exactly is, as good as I am at remembering where these are. That one just slips on my mind for a minute because I wasn't prepared to go into it either. But... We talked about it, and you can find the scripture on it, that it says those that are in your household, and if, if you're the Christian, and you're, you're the ready-watching Christian one, and the other one isn't, well, what about if you have children? Are those children then unbelievers, and when you escape, you would escape, but they would all stay? No, that's not what Paul says. Those who are yours and in your household. And you see that this <laughs> 722 redemption, which equals 70, 722, about an eighth day, talks about personal, family, and household. You see? Now, if you have a child, and let's say you're older, and, and you have a child, they're in their, I don't know, 20, 30, 20s, 30s, whatever you want to say, and they've left the house. A lot of people say, well, once saved, always saved. No, it's impossible. Paul, Paul talks about it many, many times. It's like maybe they believed in vain. If Let's say that that child is uh, 30 years old now, for example, and they had left 10 years ago. They, When they left, they just went out carousing. Maybe they got married. 
They 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 had an adulterous affair. They got divorced. You know, maybe they're dating somebody else now. They have a, she they have a kid with the previous marriage, and they're going out and they're drinking. They're never repentant. They're never they're never asking the Lord for help. Hello, do you think that person goes in the escape? No, because another thing is they're not protected now being in that household. All right, they become responsible for themselves. And this is what I want to bring up. Check this out. Okay, let's look at Noah here real quick. This is just to make a point, and then we'll get this all finished up. And the Lord said, we're in Genesis 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou in all thy house into the ark. Now let me stop there for a second. A lot of people have said when we're talking about the story of Noah and the ark, there is more than one meaning, and it's it's a very difficult study even for me. So, And I'm still learning it. But I wanted to show something because a lot of people say, well, didn't Noah and his family. I mean, this says that they got into the ark before the seven days. No, you know why? You need this program, eSword. Remember, it's a free program. Everybody that watches our videos should get it. It's free. It's called eSword. Download it. It's free. This word into doesn't mean into. It means to come towards, to come near. All right? It is not about going into the ark yet. It is to come near. All right? So I want to clarify that they're not in the ark till after the seven days. Right? They were loading the animals. They were doing this. They were doing that. And they weren't all in until it was time the door was locked and closed and shut by the Lord. And then the floodwaters came, right, in the self same day. But I don't want to really get into that. I just want to explain that real quick. So in all thy house, okay, come thou... So personal, and all thy house near to the ark. And we do know, of course, they all go into the ark later on. For I have seen, sorry, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. So what do we have? Thou, or thee, which is you, and all your house. So Noah, you and all your house come to the ark. Because I have found thee, you, righteous before me in all this gen in, in, before me in this generation. Let me ask you, who was found righteous? Everybody in Noah's family, his wife, his daughters, those that got uh, the the son-in-laws. Were they all were they all found? Righteous? No. That's not what the scriptures say, does it? The scriptures say, I have found thee. You, Noah, have I found righteous before me in this generation. But who all gets to go in the ark? His whole family, right? His whole family. And in the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. But who did the Lord find righteous? Noah. These all got to go in with Noah. Why? Because they were in his household. So Noah personal, his family second, and thirdly, those in his household. See that? So who gets to go? Them and they that are in their household. And it just so happens that this 722 redemption applies to personal, family, or household use. Guys, this is based on Scripture. How many times have we seen things like this in, in the reality and in the codes and in, in the courts and all these things related as Scripture? Well, let me show you something. Does that mean Matthew gets to go, or is it speaking to Mark? Is it speaking to, who is this actually speaking to? What about redemption? Where do we find redemption in scripture? All right. I know where it is. I'm just looking for something. All right. Where do we find redemption in scripture? Let's go to Luke 21. Let me show you something. All right. We'll show it to you from two ways. We've done it before. I think a couple videos ago. By the way, the next video is 
that that big one we're building on relates back to this sum again, by the way. So much detail in it. Okay? So what do we see? Where is it? Right here. Okay? In Luke 21, uh, verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, lift up your head. What are we looking for? What is What does he say in 36? That you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. So right when these things are beginning to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. Okay, let's look at this word redemption. The act of ransom in full. Okay, let's look at this price, look at the word of it right here. See, something to loosen with, that is a redemption price. Okay, it is a price paid. And we know that it means for, and it's paid in full, just like Redemption Code 722. And it means Christian salvation, deliverance, and redemption. Okay, it shows up in scripture 10 times. These 10 times show up where? Watch this, okay? We're in, uh, you can see G629. Here it is, G629. Redemption, deliverance, by the payment of ransom, all right? The release, a releasing effected by payment of ransom. Okay, that's what they built that code on. And they built it called 722. Now, who is this going to apply to? Oh, look at that. Do we see it in Matthew? Nope. Do we see it in Mark? Nope. Where do we see it? Luke 21, verse 28. Those who are watching and praying always to be found accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Let's just make sure of this. right? We, we broke this down. We showed this word for redemption before. It's very detailed. It's only those who are watching and praying who are repentant and seeking the Lord. Those are the group. It doesn't mean that people left behind won't be saved. They will be saved, but they will have to endure. Why? Because the easy portion is over. The about eighth day of redemption has come, and now they will have to be beaten upon the tribulum to show their, their, their actual belief, to endure these things. That's the tribulation, guys. That's the tribulum. Let's just confirm it. Let's look at the word itself. Let's look at the word redemption. Okay, just to make sure that, oh, well, yeah, you've got the, the, the Greek word for the understanding of redemption. But what about if we look up the word redemption itself? And now the computer went really slow. We'll give it a second. But obviously, you know where I'm getting at, right? You're going to see that the word redemption is only found in Luke as well. All right, yes, you're going to find it in, in other, uh, whether it's Old Testament and New. But the word redemption in relation to the Gospels, knowing who the Gospels are speaking to, it is only found, what if I do this? It is only found in the Gospel of Luke. And isn't it appropriate that it's only found in Luke? Why? Because we know, we know Luke said about an eighth day for those who are going to see the kingdom of God. We know that Hosea at the beginning of the eighth, which is the start of the next seven, and John, the beginning of the eighth, the start of the next seven, and that John seven was all about the Feast of Tabernacles leading us to the about an eighth day, just like John and Hosea were showing us, and who is being spoken about in each of those cases, directing us and revealing to us who Ruth is. It's the adulterous Gentile bride. Do you guys follow all that? It's the adulterous Gentile bride. And that's not going to come up. Just trust me or go look for yourselves. This program, by the way, guys, is uh, free. It's not a program. 
It's uh, just a website called blueletterbible.org. You can look up all of these word definitions for yourself. This is an amazing website as well. All right. So what do we have? Tishri 22nd redemption at about the eighth day for the Gentile bride who is the adulteress in the year that equals no other year possible because 2,000 years to the return of Christ feet down on the Mount of Olives is precisely 2,000 years from his death and resurrection when he would return again. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.